Hello and welcome to the Date Your Wife podcast. I am your host, Danielle K. White, with co-host. my co-host. You can't be the host and then no, make I'm, me the co-host. I'm the host. This is my co-host. Actually, I think you probably could. I mean, if you're the lead host, I'm the co-host. That would make sense. Are you the lead host? We are your hosts. We are your hosts. Hosts? You know, one of the interesting conversations I've had with our daughters recently is uh, lesbian, gay, bi, transgender, That's Q. That's not the topic. It's, of not our... the, it's not the topic, but I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be straight with you. I've, I didn't understand What's what the Q, Q was. Q was questioning. Questioning who you are I'm sexually gonna say, or I'm who you say are as a Q person. Q is like 12 to 15. Uh, listen, <laughs> well, well, the reason this topic came up is because Bailey was, uh, Bailey was talking to me about how one of the boys in fifth grade was gay. And then in sixth grade, he was bi. And then in seventh grade, he is Q. Like, I don't, I, and I didn't understand what that meant. I was like, what the fuck is Q all about? Tell me about this Q. And she's like, Q is questioning. I was like, well, of course, questioning. Fifth grade, I think he's that gay. Everybody's Sixth questioning. grade, he's bi. Seventh grade, he's questioning. I'm questioning. In fourth grade, you're questioning whether you're <laughs> bi, straight, or gay? No, I'm just questioning what kind of. I guess you're going to be gay, be lesbian. What? You'd be lesbian. You wouldn't be gay. You'd be lesbian. Yeah. You're a woman. Yeah, no. Listen, I don't have any problem with gay, lesbian, transgender. Transgender is a little weird thing for me. Yeah, it's good. It's a little weird. I, I don't think it's like weird, weird. It's just like I don't really get it. But the thing I really don't get, Q. Why? I, th- I think Q I think Q's fucking it up forever, all I the people. I think like Miley Cyrus, she's Q. <laughs> Questioning what she is? Yeah. I think she is. She just left her husband for a, for a woman. It's fine. All right, anyways, I just think it was crazy to be a parent having a conversation with my seventh grader. She's 12 about this, but she was super mature about it. I was mature about it. But I didn't like I, I didn't really know how to have the conversation with her because I didn't understand it. I was like, explain it. This is normal talk in the middle school. When I was in I middle school, it, two girls what, no. kissed one time on TV and I, I couldn't even believe it. I gotta be honest. I think it's like important to just have good communication, even when you're younger. So who cares? Like this they're gonna experience when they're twelve or twenty. So Well, I don't I don't think it's so much as a problem so much as I think that our kids are facing a whole lot of conversations we never faced when we were kids. When we were their age. You were not having the yeah, but you still you were not have, having those conversations. Okay, but you still have the same feelings, and I think that now no nope, talk right good. in that microphone. No, I'm good. I think you have the same feelings. I just think that you think now, feelings are the same, but the situations yeah. are different. Yeah, everyone always has the same feelings and emotions. It's fine. When I was in the, when I was Bailey's age, I remember going to a sleepover at a friend's house. I wasn't even really friends with him, but you I went to the Q? sleepover. You were cute. No, I wasn't cute at all. There was Porky's. <laughs> I was for sure straight. Like, listen, I've never even had the feeling to go the other way because I can tell you why. Because they showed Porky's, what which was it? A, Porky's? Porky's was a TV, it was a movie. Porky's? Porky's is the name of it. Now, the, the greatest part about Porky's was the fact that there were nipples and naked breasts. And, like, as a young boy in middle school, you're super pumped about this. Why does this podcast always <laughs> go to sex? Karen? Where did you think it was going to go when I said Porky's? Do you I think I was going to go to, like, you know, linens for, the, linens for uh, the couch? Like, I don't even. Por- I don't even couch those linens. All right, listen. All right, what's they don't our have topic limits. today? Right, our topic, Jesus. All right, our topic is no. Our topic is on parenting. No, it's not. It you, is. No, you had two topics before we got here. I know, and it's going to be linked up to the topic of parenting. That's no, why I brought up no, the conversation. No, it was not parenting. What was it? It no, was good. No, I have. Listen, here. Here's the thing we're going to talk about. No, it has everything to do with parenting because it's a feeling that I have that you were talking about earlier, which, which is, is the feeling of guilt. Oh, guilt. Come on now. Listen, but that's guilt. not parenting. Oh my God, you're out of your mind. Okay, there's a lot of mommy guilt. Okay, and there's a lot of dad guilt too. So talk to me, mom guilt. What no, we're going to really another, address? No, there was another topic. No, that we talked about. There was like guilt and overcoming guilt. No, there was guilt, and there no, there was just guilt. We were talking about guilt. There wasn't you, any other you, topic. You were asking me, you're like, do you face guilt? And I was like, that's and a I human said, no. Emotion. And I was asking, how I do you think you think I'm a robot? You're like, I don't think do, you're a robot. Do you experience happiness? Do I don't you, think you're a robot. Do you experience <laughs> guilt? I'm do you like, have feelings? Do you? I'm like, I... Are you made of plastic? Yeah, plastic. Are you a blow up doll? On. No, you're a human being. Congratulations. All right, listen, so let's have a talk about this. Guilt. The, no, I have. I know exactly where I'm taking this show. I just talked about the conversation with my kids because it was a good segue, which you're fucking up right now, a good segue <laughs> to talk about the conversation of energy around children and but it's energy around life, which is I have a lot of guilt around kids over the years. Like a lot of guilt, right? I'll you know give you... what? I make decisions on, like, is this going to make me feel guilty? And if it does, I'm like, ooh. Okay. You really think that? You think, I do. does this, if I, I think... make decisions, it makes me feel guilty, I yes or no? I literally think guilt is the enemy. Like, All right, talk more about this. nothing Go. can pull you down more than guilt. And so, honestly, when I'm making decisions, I'm like, I'm going to feel bad about that later, so I'm not going to do it. 
When you have sex with me out of guilt, do you feel weird about it? Oh my God. <laughs> no. You don't? I feel accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> you feel accomplished. I'm like, check oh, that off the list. Get that Here's off the list. Here's how it goes for women. We have All like right. a checklist of things that might make us feel guilty. And we're like, no, that, no, that, no, that, no, that. Because we, cause we fear guilt. Like, do you guilt. avoid it or do you we do it? We fear guilt. We're like, guilt's going to take us to a whole nother low. Like we talked about on last week's podcast where we're like, listen, False, what do we call it? False loop or false? Yeah, the false lift. Yes. And so, like, th- there's nothing worse than that guilt. You wake up as a woman, you're like, shit, I was a bad mom. Shit, I drank too much. Shit, I was a bad wife. Like, shit, I was a bad business owner. Like, do you wake up with this feeling? Is this yes, actually a feeling in the morning? Always in the morning. Right it's, when you wake up. No, it's never like midday. You're always like, in the morning. You're like, all right. Fuck. You know what I'd like to hear about? I'd like you to share with everyone your dream about being Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes, just share I it. Know. Okay. I think it's good. I think it's okay. a good segue. It's you no, didn't weird, you didn't hold up strong segue. there. Okay. Literally, you were no, Matthew McConaughey I, in your dream. So it wasn't you were sleeping I with Matthew McConaughey. Up, I don't know what time it was, and literally, I do you ever have dreams where you wake up and you're like, <gasps> like you like you were dying in your sleep, and no. then you woke up and you're like, holy shit, I brought myself out of it. I never do. I don't never? dream. Never. Never have dreams. Oh. You have all the dreams for us, so tell us about oh, it. Oh my god! I'm so. living through you and Matthew McConaughey, who you became. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought you were going to tell me you had sex with Matthew McConaughey in your dream. No, I was like, I, I can, wish. I can respect that. <laughs> no. But you became Matthew McConaughey. It appears you are a Q. So you are questioning in your I, dreams. No, <laughs> I, I was like an action figure. I don't even know. So in my dream, I woke up in the middle of the night. I was like scared to death, where I had like so much bad energy around me, and I was like cuddling up against Garrett. And I was like, were you oh, right I'm, up against me? I didn't even I, feel you. I literally. I was like, I gotta, go, I gotta go pee so bad, and I didn't want to. Oh, you were scared. I was scared. I was so, scared when I watched Gremlins back in the day to go pee. <laughs> All right, keep my going. God. <laughs> keep Same. going. I was like eight years old, though. I was terrified to walk down my grandmother's hallway no, from the bank bedroom. No, I just think that there's like, I don't know if it's, I actually, I have a little bit of anxiety, and so sometimes when I go to bed, like, I think that anxiety happens in your sleep, and it makes you dr- Dream. Were you anxious last night when you went to bed? No, I was actually fine. Huh. But I've had a lot with business and work and life. And a All right, so you're Matthew McConaughey. Talk to us about this dream, though, because I thought it was quite okay. traumatic. So I woke up, and I'm, like, scared to death, and I'm, like, snuggling Gary. No, like, don't talk about when you morning. woke up. Talk about the dream. So the dream, I, okay. okay. All right, let's go. Okay. Deep so, breath. Uh, so I wake up. <sighs> or no, I'm in a dream. I'm Matthew McConaughey. And talk I'm, like Matthew I'm, McConaughey. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep Does going. Does he have an accent? I'm, I don't know. He sounds like a guy, though, because he like, is a guy. I'm like, I'm Matthew. <laughs> <I don't laughs> I'm Matthew. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in the middle of a dream. I'm in a canoe. I'm in a canoe in a dark river. Do you have a paddle in yes, the canoe? Yes, I have a paddle. <laughs> and I'm paddling my ass off, and I don't know what I'm paddling away from, but I'm scared. Are you in a river or a lake or an ocean? It's like a dark Swimming river. Pool. I don't even know. You're in a Dreams dark river. Dreams don't make sense. So okay. I'm, I'm paddling in this river, and I'm Matthew McConaughey. Like, to are my... you shredded Matthew McConaughey, or are you a fatty McGee? Are you fatty Is McGee, Matthew fat? McConaughey? I don't know. Maybe it's later down the road. Uh, anyways, fatty I'm McGee. paddling, and I'm scared to death. And all of a sudden, I go from paddling to I'm in a um, ski suit, and I'm like... Uh, so you're in a river, and then you end up on a mountain in a ski suit. Yes, and I'm. And that's why I think I'm you're Matthew, still Matthew McConaughey, McConaughey because like I couldn't do that. I don't know how to ski. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew does obviously. Oh, so does I'm he? Skiing. Have you seen him in a ski movie? I've never seen him. He in a does ski no movie. harm. He does all things. He does all things. He does all things. It appears you in your dreams too. So that's good. <laughs> Continue. He not only so, does you, he becomes I'm, you. <laughs> he I'm eats skiing. you alive. All I'm right. skiing down the mountain. Okay. And an avalanche is coming to get me. And all of a sudden, the, the snow is, like, caving in on me. And all of a sudden, it's like I can't see anything. And then it, I think the snow gets me. And I wake up, and I'm in a warm pool of water. And, like, the sun is shining on me. And then all of a sudden, some, like, monster pulls my ankles and is, like, eating my feet. Did you feel the eating? That was new. I didn't hear that. Yes. Morning. Yes, really. Literally all, do, Were you laying in blood? Maybe not a warm pool of water? I don't know. What water? does this have to do with today's topic? Well, I'm just talking about you have lots of dreams. Your dreams mean things. And... Part no. of what we're dealing with is the emotion of guilt, which is there are a lot of feelings I get around guilt. I don't become Matthew actually, McConaughey when I have I, them, but I do have them. I think this dream was because I've been anxious with work. I fired Garrett back in January. Because nope, March. You fired me in March. No. I quit in March. Well, you didn't fire me. I fired you back in like February. You fired slash I quit in March. And I have like taken on the role of CEO, salon owner, education director. How's that feel? I feel very strong. You 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 look very strong. I feel like I've snapped back from this baby strong. I feel like I mentally feel strong. I feel really strong. And I'm part of me is like, why did I avoid this? Like that's that could be a whole topic in itself. Like, well, let's talk about it right now. Why did you avoid it? 
I think I was scared. I think I was scared that I couldn't become this person, that it was going to be too overwhelming, that I was Were you Matthew scared before McConaughey you had... <laughs> in an avalanche. I don't fucking know. But... Well, that's what happens. When you become Matthew McConaughey, anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> no. so, that's a motto for today's oh, show. Jesus. Become Matthew McConaughey. Just WWMD. What like, would Matthew he, do? Apparently he is like my superhero of I don't know what. I think you just, internally you have a sexual deep desire for Matthew McConaughey, and I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have any problem with it. I think it's great. I mean, he's a shredded guy. He's a great actor. He's got great I mean, curly hair. Whatever. He's gotten super skinny for roles. That's impressive. I mean, you have to basically starve yourself to become a movie actor. This, I would never do that. Is this podcast about Matthew McConaughey? I, well, it, it appears it is because your dream was about Matthew McConaughey. No. All right, so listen. I, honestly, like I went through a lot of stress with work and I was just trying to figure things out. And I actually feel very strong. I feel like things are good and I was scared and... I don't think I had anything, any guilt with work. I think I was just, like, scared of the unknown. Do you know what I've noticed? What? I've noticed that you're an amazing mom to babies. I'm a good mom. You are. Like, it's very interesting. <laughs> you sit and have stare-offs with our baby. Aww. For hours, and I think it's beautiful. I'm just being in the moment. I know, I love it. What's that like being a mom, like, having a baby? Like, seriously, what's that like to hold you know a little creature at three months old I... that you know you made and pushed out your vagina? Fun fact about me, I actually never really wanted to do business. I literally was like, I, I thought you were going to say I didn't want to have babies. No. I was like, really? Literally, from the time I was, like, mm. 15, I'm like, I'm going to have seven kids, I'm going to marry a rich dude, and life's going to be over. And I... You wanted seven children? I literally... Did you think this? Yeah, I was like, I want seven kids. I told all my friends, they're like, you're nuts. And I'm like, man, you're nuts. But I realized <laughs> <laughs> I don't want seven kids. But I realized I really do love being a mom. And in a lot of ways, that's actually uh, pushed me to have this success I've had in my business. So Okay. So we, we started on this topic before we took this huge detour about Matthew McConaughey and ended up back here, which was a great detour, by the way. Um, we, we started the talk around guilt. Now, one of the questions I asked you while you were driving down the road with me and you were sitting in shotgun on Instagram, I asked you a question. The question was simple. Do you feel guilt? That's all I asked you. I said, do you feel guilt? And you said. It's a normal human emotion. Well, that was a nice Wikipedia definition. I appreciate you pulling that shit out. That's right. what I said. You No, you did not. You were like, do you feel <laughs> you didn't guilt? Say, and I was like, yes, I feel guilt. Yeah, but you didn't say, it's a nice human emotion. Yes, I did. No, you just said, yeah, of course I feel guilt. That's not what you said. Okay. You said, yes, of course I feel guilt. Okay, so then I asked you another question. I said, well, how do you deal with the guilt when you feel it? Because you never seem like you're guilty about shit. I hate feeling you guilty. You seem the opposite no, of guilty. No. I don't I, even know what like the opposite of guilty I is. Hate what is the opposite feeling guilty. of guilty? I think that guilt like takes you to spiral to a whole nother low. And so for me, when I recognize that I'm feeling guilty, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And I literally am like, okay, let's look at this logically. And I'm like, it, like, could you fix this? Could you perfect this? Could you? Why do you feel this way? What can you do to not feel this? And it's so funny because I think that women feel the mommy guilt, but I'm like, how can you set yourself up to win where you don't feel the mommy guilt? Or I'm just going to talk about women and because right now I'm trying to like lose baby weight. I'm I'm almost there. I'm like six pounds you away. Look, you look you look amazing. I can fit in my clothes, but I'm not like bikini body ready. You have, listen, you, the baby's three months old, and you are looking amazing. Well, what I'm saying is there's even guilt with women with food. Okay. So you wake up the next morning, and you're like, ah, oh, shit, I shouldn't have that glass of wine, or oh, shit, I shouldn't have that brownie, or whatever it is. And so to me, I'm like, okay, well, there's this period at night where it's like three to four hours where you're like, oh, I want a treat, I want a treat, I want a treat. But then I have to ask myself, is it worth feeling the guilt? Because I know that the guilt will ultimately spiral you even lower. So is the guilt going to set me up to have a shitty day the next day? Then that three-hour time window where I know that I want a brownie or a glass of wine, I'm like, no, I can control that and have self-discipline because I know the guilt is going to last me like a whole day tomorrow. So for me, I know that like guilt plays a huge like enemy in my life. And I know that it like you're always at choice. We give children choices. Like when we're parenting our kids, I'm like, hey, do you want do you want to take a shower right now or do you want to have a uh, take a shower and then go? They're like, I always try to give my children choices so they don't think I'm like dictating or controlling them. Um, that was a really bad example, but like, you, do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. when you're like Ruby, do you want to do this or that? Yeah. And it makes her make a decision, and she feels like it's her own. That's kind of how I go into guilt. I'm like, okay, so if I choose this now, then I don't suffer the guilt in the morning. If I do this as a mom, if I do this with my health and diet, if I do this, then I don't suffer the guilt. It could last longer and spiral me downwards. Do you know how I deal with the guilt? No. I stack it. 
I know. You, you're able to do this in your mind, and you're able to make this assessment. You're basically stacking in your mind, huh. <clears throat> which is what I do through my app on my cell phone. Okay. With the entire stack system, attack with a stack. Like the entire system is about dealing with my thoughts. I don't I think do most. Think I don't think I'm, most guys can think fucking I'm, change that around their head like you. I do, do think I. I'm just super logical, and I do think I flip things because you do. I hate that feeling so bad. Is I'm that like, why you flip it with me in conversations? Oh, you'll take the opposite, even no matter what. Because I'm like, ooh, why do I feel this way? And I'm like, I don't like feeling this way. So I know that if I take the feeling out of it and I logically look at something, even if I'm in the wrong, I can understand it and then I can like let go and try to do better. So you deal with the guilt by flipping the story in your mind. Yeah. Which is what stacking is. Did you know this is what stacking is? That's great. A lot of people need that tool. They do. And some people have superpowers like you to become Matthew McConaughey and turn your and my baby were unicorns. You are. The baby's amazing. Baby's been sleeping. I, baby Isla's been sleeping through the night since like three weeks. She's sleeping like 10 hours. She's a good baby. She sleeps in the snoo, though. The snoo is a magical device. I think the snoo is a unicorn maker. I think you, you promote the snoo every time we do a podcast. Well, because I'm so fucking impressed by All the right, snoo. All right, so let's, let's get on topic and let's We are on topic. Show. We've been on topic this entire time. We don't even finish the show. We're on top. We're dealing with guilt. You talk about how you deal how with guilt. How do you guilt. deal with guilt? I told you I stack it. I deal with like a series of questions that help me flip the guilt because the guilt itself, guilt plagues guys in a massive way, right? So guys go, guys who go through all kinds of guilt inside of marriage and dealing with kids and dealing with business because you have the idea of the expectation is go make money, go make money, go make money, go make money, right? So you go do that the best you can and you make the money. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't make the money, which is worse. But if you make the money, you feel one thing. If you don't make the money, you feel another thing. If you make the money, you feel guilty because you're gone from the family and the kids. And then if you, you don't make the money, then you feel guilty because you're gone and you're still not making the money to take care of the kids. So of the levels of guilt, the worst guilt is not making the money and being gone from the kids. But if you make the money, you're gone from the kids, there's like a you, justifiable guilt You know guilt what I can tell out. you? I remember there was a point in our marriage where you were working your ass off and then you weren't paying the bills. And I was like, oh, this isn't going to work out. It was a foundation for a way. And you know what? It's so funny. I feel like a lot of women are fine. They're they're fine with like taking on the home load until their husband's not paying the bill. And then they're like, motherfucker. It's true. It's true. I was feeling about myself. I was feeling about myself. Do you hide? Do you hide? Like, what do you do? No, like, I, I, um, sometimes when I think back, I'm not sure exactly what I was doing because I was trying to figure out what I was doing. So I would spend the whole day, like, doing but a lot of shit. Did but you feel I, like your role was, like, to be the provider, but then if you weren't providing, like, uh, how do you, you feel, feel as you a feel, man? Oh, you feel worthless. You feel worthless tits on So what do you do? Do you hide? Um, I try. I mean, I, I kind of hid, yeah. I mean, that was back in the beg for hand jobs Do you days. feel guilt? Yeah, there was tons of guilt. There was tons of, like, shame. There was tons of guilt. Like, you so, feel like shit. So what, like, here's You feel like I, total shit. You feel right. like a worthless guy. You feel like you so can't provide. So if you provide. feel this guilt, what do you do? Instead of hiding, what do you recommend doing? Well, what do I recommend doing, or what did I do in the beginning? What did both? What did I do in the beginning? I literally ran. And you're like, you're running from your life. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> running from my true. life. You're like, you're running from your life. I'm Garrett not running ran. from my life. Garrett was running, like, ultra marathons and, like... I was running, like, 15, 20 miles a day. And not paying the bills. And not paying the bills, but I was running far. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Forrest. <laughs> Thanks, Forrest. <laughs> but I was running far, and I got super skinny. And I as looked a like... wife, I'm like, I fucking believe. Run harder, baby. <laughs> no, you weren't saying that. No, I was like, fucking you weren't saying stop, anything. Ass- stop running. It wasn't working out. Like, I, I didn't know what to do. And the, the, I think the hardest part is I didn't know how to talk to you about any of it. Did you feel like I was not supportive? Yes. Really? Yeah, 100% I felt like you were supportive. No, not supportive. Yeah, I felt like you were not supportive. I was not. I know. <laughs> 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 Easy, Matthew McConaughey. I told you, you just asked me a simple question. <laughs> I showed up on your ultra marathon days and I was like, how's, no. your, how's your run? Yeah, no. How Are you kidding me? I remember I was doing the 180 mile Red Rock Relay. <laughs> you showed up and I fought with you. I got in arguments with you. While I'm like 130 uh, miles into the race, you know I'm arguing a, you with you, so, walking down the fucking you know road. Was so hard as a woman. What? You're telling how, me how that, talented I was at 170 no, pounds running. You're telling <laughs> me that I should support you, and I was like, motherfucker, pay the bills. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't get that. What I got was you weren't supporting me in my pursuit to run lots of miles. Because that was going nowhere. <laughs> no, it was actually deeply powerful. Do you know what it did for me? Here's the thing is funny. Like that entire time period was, impa- you, it, it was very important for me. You weren't going to be a professional marathon No, no, runner. I wasn't. But what it did do is it taught me how to hurt for long periods of time. And yeah, you and I were doing shitty. You have a, a, you have so much mental endurance. 
we well we well, I was learned how to physically hurt for I think there's a lot of days and days That's, and days on end with no complaint say, at all. Here's just what, fucking here's what hurt. I will say, like because I'm really into fitness and working out, and I will say there's something physically with the body like you can push yourself so hard. And when you can physically break yourself, you can mentally take yourself to another level. Hundred percent. This is what like I've, this is what I've done. I went from mar- old marathons and so to Ironman to ultras well, to time, CrossFit was like, to Kokoro well, to Navy Seal training camp. At the time, I was camps. like, "You're just like fucking. What are you doing?" But I realized you were kind of like mentally enduring yourself to handle so much shit with business. Like physically, yeah. if you can take a beating. Like business wise, you're like bring it on. Business and marriage, like like literally, this is why this is why. But there's warrior. a lot of breakthrough with the physicality of it. Massive. Like I learned how to hurt. I sometimes like physically kicking my own ass in a workout just because I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be better at business. <laughs> like I just I feel like there's I feel like there's a switch inside of I think as a parent, as a husband, everything like my ultra running there's, years there's such trained a, me to feel that the, way. There's like the training, there's the discipline, there's like there's such a high in everything. There's just, but there's a difference. It's like, it's almost like you learn how to hurt and be okay with hurting and there's no finish line. And that's like marriage. Marriage is no finish line. It's not like you ever get it figured out. You're up, you're down, you're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. You and your kids, you're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. Business, you're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. With yourself, you're like up, you're down, you're up, you're down. And what I found throughout all of that, and then what really brought it home was all the training for a couple of years I did with the Navy SEALs groups inside of like SEAL Fit and a bunch of our other friends that were like um, veteran Navy SEALs. And veteran uh, special force and military that were training me and training my friends, like they would just beat the shit out of us. And they would keep saying the same thing. We're like, there's no finish line. There's no finish line. Why? What the fuck are you looking for? There's no finish line. Why do you keep pretending in your mind that there's some way this thing's going to end? It's never going to fucking end. And I'm like, and it was weird. There was a snap. I was sitting one moment in the middle of a field. I was in a grass field during this three-day no-sleep camp. I love those moments. And they beat the shit out of me. I'm 48 hours in. We're sitting in the middle of this big green grass green field. I still to this day don't know where the fuck this field was. We're sitting in this field. There's about I've never the- had that moment. I said I love this moment. I I was empathizing with your like just your physical You had a Matthew feet. McConaughey dream the about being I in know. this moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> like there's these moments when you're like I don't think I can do this. And then, yeah. you're, but yours, you were in a field. I don't. But mine switched. I no. So here's how my switch, though. I'm sitting there, we're doing push ups. There's no end to the push ups. We would do 10 push ups. Then we would sit back on our knees. Then we would extend back out. We would do 10 push ups. We extend back on our knees and we rest. So the, the guy leading us, this big ass jack dude would lead us. And, and then, like 15, 20 seconds later, we'd be doing 10 more push ups. There was no end. There was no talking. There was no yelling. There was nothing. We're sitting in this field, 48 hours, no sleep, beat down. I'm exhausted as fuck. We're doing push ups. And one of the coaches on the megaphone is like, There is no finish line. <laughs> there is no finish line. And come over, White, why the fuck do you keep looking like there's a finish line? There's no finish line, White. And I'm like, Sitting there, I'm like, uh, And all of a sudden, this shit there's snapped. There's no finish line. No, it snapped in my mind. And I do literally you know, collapsed into the do event. You, I don't. Go ahead. Do you know when you were in, what was the name of that camp? That was Kokoro. This is okay. where I'm telling the story from. No, when you were in that camp, I remember, I don't, I, I feel like kind of, I'm very in tune to energy. Yeah. And I remember working out where there was like, like, our, I don't want to say our souls met, but I like saw where you were at and I was like, oh shit. And I, I was like, that's going to be hard and that's going to open up a lot for him. And I think in that moment for me, I was like, okay, I had a little bit of like empathy for what you were experiencing, even though I wasn't there. Energetically, I was like, I hope he's okay. (laughs) That was 2015. That was a fantastic, I mean, that was a quantum year for me. Those who have never been to Kokoro camp with Navy SEAL Mark Devine and the rest of his team at SEAL Fit, um, I'd encourage you to do it. We've had about 50 guys from Wake Aboria go through the SEAL Fit uh, Academy go through uh, Kokoro, go through their six-day event, et cetera. It's, like, phenomenal. But uh, but it broke me. Like, I was sitting there in the middle of this, and it broke me. And I and, I, and in that moment in 2015, it was the there's first time a, I got to the place. There was a lot of power in submission. There was huge. But what I submitted to was the idea that there's no finish line, which is I just did the work that was in front of me. This empowered me to work on us. This empowered me to work on my business. So, like, I'll be hurting and suffering in business with so much shit to do. And I just take a deep breath, and I'm like, there is no finish line. This will not end, end quickly. Take it day by day. This is going to fucking hurt really bad. And it is what it is. I feel like I get a little bit overwhelmed with, like, when I look at the future of my business and life and everything else. I'm like, 
oh my God, I'm going to forget it all. And when I get overwhelmed, I just want to like curl up in a ball, have a bottle of wine and like do nothing. And that's when I'm like, I'm just going to be a stay at home mom. Mom, I should just be happy and grateful for being a stay at home mom. I just, that's all I'm supposed to do. And you think then, a lot of women sell out? In that, who actually don't want to be a listen, I, I fully support women who want to be CEO mom and be stay home mom. I love that. Um, um, but I, do you think I there are know. a lot of women who sell out to that? I'm not going to say anything because all right, I, I'll say something. I no, think a shitload no. of women sell out to okay. that because I know a ton of them who are miserably depressed in their fifties and sixties. I do know them personally. Well, that's not too and late. And some of them here's are in my a, no, family. Here's what I'll tell you. Here's what I'll tell you. I love being a mom. I love everything about it. But I also know like that I love doing stuff for myself as well. And not only that, like I think a lot of women pursue things outside of being a mom, but they look at it as a hobby. And I did that in the beginning. I I literally jumped into hair because I was like, "Eh, it's a hobby. Like I can have a little bit of purpose outside of being a mom and maybe I'll make a little extra income and like that's great, balance for me. And then in life I was faced with the situation of like, Oh fuck! I don't know if I'm gonna stay married, and I'm I, if I'm gonna work, I'm not looking at it as a cute hobby anymore. And I think I gave myself more credit for who I could become and and what I knew and and everything else with hair. And I no longer looked at it as like a hobby. And I think that a lot of women they're super happy being a stay at home wife. And from my experience, I felt like maybe I could do more, but I was put in a situation where I had to do more. I didn't know if I was going to stay married. I had two children at the time, and I was like, I have to make a decision for myself. And I was like, fuck that. I know I'm capable of more. And and I think that – so for me, it's like it's not – if it's – I don't want to talk down on anyone who's like, oh, I'm content being a stay-at-home mom, or I feel like a ton of pleasure. I feel like a ton of growth being a mom. For me, that wasn't my path. And so I – I feel like if the cards were different, could I have experienced the same amount of growth? I don't know because that wasn't my path. Um, But there's times even now where I feel a ton of guilt, where I feel a ton of like, holy shit, I'm trying to work and do everything else. I'm like, oh, I should just be a mom. And I'm like, no, I, I love working. And what's cool about when I was put in a situation where I had to make it more than a hobby is like, I'm really fucking good at what I do. And I began to value my mom time even more. Like, I began to value who I could become as a producer. I began to value who I was as a mom. I wasn't just like, oh, I'm looking for something to make a little income and and maybe, like, I can buy some clothes with it. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm going to compete with you this year. (laughs) Like, I'm not saying that to have an ego, but I, I see so much in myself where I'm like, this is so cool to be in a place in a situation where I can sit at dinner with my husband. I'm like, what are you doing with business? Here's what I'm doing with business. Okay, what are you doing? And I'm like, holy shit. Like we have two separate businesses that are rising together and and that's my path and that's the path that I created for myself and that's the path that I chose for myself. So kudos to all you moms out there because there's times where I'm like, shit, mom guilt is real and I had a lot of mom fail moments. But I think I would have mom fail moments whether I chose to work or I didn't. And I personally believe that working has actually in a lot of ways made me value my time so much more. And when you value your time, every fucking moment matters. Smiles with your baby matter matters. Like sitting there, changing a diaper matters. And that's what's so cool to be in a place in life where I'm like, life is fun. And I have created this and I'm so excited to see where it goes. I literally have nothing to add to that, Matthew McConaughey. That was beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking put on your snowsuit. And- <laughs> oh, I guess I should be a female actress. I don't know who I should be. Who would I be? Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. When we Underworld first, in no, black when leather we were first with married, gun you shooting were like, you werewolves. You were so into that. And I was like, I had short blonde hair. And I was like, you like Kate Beckinsale? I'm like, I have short blonde hair. And like, that's not. Do you know why though? Is because <laughs> she was wearing black leather and she was hunting werewolves. And I, I don't know, for whatever reason, but I, 15 years, 16, 17 years ago, I thought that was hot. Well, we know what our my Halloween costume is going to be this yeah. year. Is it? Is that what it's going to be? I don't know. Let's wrap up the show. All right, listen. This, uh, this brings to a conclusion here. We talked about guilt. Hopefully you got some shit from that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we talked about like uh, having babies. We talked about running businesses together. And uh, we had some conversations about, uh, well, Matthew McConaughey. And if you like him. I guess my superhero is Matthew McConaughey. My superhero is Matthew McConaughey. We did end up getting, we rented the same yacht with the same driver in Capri last summer that Matthew McConaughey had with his family. It's true. Good for us. I think think you're stalking him. 
I, it was weird. You're stalking him in your dreams. That's I, right. I appreciate, I appreciate and I approve. Listen, I love you. Who's your, <laughs> who's your crush? He's not actually my crush. I don't know why it was Matthew McConaughey in my dream. He was my crush? I think he's You're like, my crush. I'm your crush. No, you got it. No. <clears throat> Yours you... is Matthew McConaughey, and oh. mine is you. I'm never going to love this stand. <laughs> be the best uh, you, you can be. Be the best you you can be, and if you can't be, be Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> I freaking hate you. <laughs> uh, hey, we're done with the day show. A couple little promos out there. We got Warrior Greens. <laughs> Powder Greens, we've got... Hundreds, not thousands, hundreds right now at the time of the show who are currently consuming of the Warrior Greens Powder Green Supplement every single day uh, as part of their core four. If you want to check that out, i got a funny movie there. Worst case scenario, be entertained. Best case scenario, get yourself some Warrior Greens Powdered Supplements. Take on the road and or have your house. You can check that out at warriorgreens.com. Also, we have a new video series available at 7. Uh, it's actually not 7. Excuse me, not seven pits. It's at be the man.com, which is where we have the seven pits of married businessmen with children. It is not built for women, but women do get value from it. It is built for men who are married, who have children. If you are a man in that place or you are married to a man in that place, I would encourage you to head on over to be the man. I don't have a sales com. pitch. You don't need one. You've I got have, Matthew I McConaughey. Have, I have amazing hair and <laughs> I have an education company called DKW Styling Academy. She she fired the name Big Money Stylist. Uh, you can't scale that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm yeah, like, but it's always going to be your no, origin. I'm, it's I'm always going to be your thinking, origin. I'm like, hey, I need to scale my shit. Like my mastermind's it's getting too be big. Your I'm like, can origin. I create Big Money Stylist Academy? No, I cannot. No, you cannot. Well, that was because it was my idea. All right, I know. listen, that's all we got for you. We guys see you guys next week. My wife's looking amazing. We're going to Hawaii. Maybe we'll do a show in Hawaii. Oh, oh okay. in Hawaii, night. just Have like good Mexico. Night. Good night. Peace. See you later. Promos. I'm going to go get my wife naked right now nope. as she thinks about being Matthew McConaughey, oh which God. is really weird for me. Bye-bye.